feels super dramatic. Okay, let's do this. What is, what is this? on your lap mom <laughs> hello and welcome to the once upon a corgi podcast this is episode 40 i have hair in my mouth dog fur dog fur hi and welcome to episode 40 of the once upon a corgi podcast we are a crafty puppy podcast coming to you from the southwest corner of connecticut i'm gabby your host and we are joined today by audrey oh god this nugget this sausage princess who wants to be on my lap, and uh, Iron is our other corgi, so we're a one woman, two corgi team. I'm gonna put up a picture here of all the places you can find me online, uh, either to follow me or all of my hand dyed yarn and fiber, which is Once Upon a Corgi Handmade. And you can find all the show notes in our Ravelry group. I think that's it. We're trying a new setup, again. We have a couple cows going on in the group, the Beauty and the Beast cow is going through the end of this week, uh, May 26th. We will be closing the threads the, the night of, like, so midnight the 27th I'll be closing the thread, depends on what time I go to bed. So if you have any Beauty and the Beast themed yarn or projects, get those into the finished objects thread. There's both one in my Ravelry group and Tanya's from the Teen Knit Pearl podcast. We are co-hosting the cow together. Um, and it's not just knit-alongs, it's crocheting or Let's craft along, if you will. And as always, we have the Treat Yourself 2017. We have one sort of announcement. Um, I am putting a call out for test knitters. What? So, yes, I have been working with Allie from the Get Lit Knit podcast, and we have designed our first shawl. So I'm going to show it to you now. Ta-da! Super simple uh, knit on the bias shawl and just this textured pattern. Which the camera's not picking up very well, but it is there, believe me. So uh, I'm we are putting a call out for test knitters. Um, yeah, I'm going to open a thread in the Ravelry group. We need about four people one or two to do it in a solid, and then one or two to do it in a light speckled or a light variegated colorway. The call, I don't know, this is my first pattern. I don't, I'm not really sure of the protocol here. Just um, go in the Ravelry group, post in the thread. We are going to give you two weeks. It is a one skein shawl. It'll have like the, the day I need, like your, it to be, the day I need it to be done and yeah, all that information will be in the uh, Ravelry thread. I just don't have the calendar in front of me to tell you the exact dates. This is the Olive Martini's colorway and it is on my Oliver base which is 100% Superwash Merino singles and I love it. Yeah it was a lot of fun to put together. I definitely I have some shawl ideas still in still in my head. I kind of I want to I want to get started on that as soon as possible. So yeah, I want to be able to get this pattern out as soon as possible to you guys. So this is my call for help. Help me knitting community, you're my only hope. Sorry this is super awkward, I've ne never asked anybody for anything like this before. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for it. 
I'm very excited. And contact me. I will be sending messages out to everybody tomorrow, uh, Monday, May 23rd. Yeah, so this is the Olive Martinez shawl. Get it. Get it. Anyway, let's move on. I have one finished object for you guys and a good announcement because I found my sock blockers. That's what happens when you clean. We have, ooh, iron, oh, it's falling off. We have finished the Mercury socks. This is pair number two for us, but it is for um, the Titan Jake. And it is a uh, pattern by Kim Drotar. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And it is out of Narwhal Needleworks, the Wanderverse colorway on their tweed base. I forgot the name of it. And there we go. Uh, he has worn them once, as you can see. I mean, these don't fit normally, but he's worn them once and he loves them. I'm very happy that they fit. And I finished them on his birthday. I think maybe like 1 a.m. the day after, but close enough. So there's a close up and this is how the yarn knits up. I was really glad that he picked this pattern because I had a blast knitting it. So they are finally done and now we're going to give us some time to get some other stuff off the needles and then cast on his electric pink socks and I can't wait for that. And that leads us into whips. The only other socks I have on the needles is the uh, Towers Over the Thames colorway. It, they're just a plain vanilla sock, but I haven't really touched them and they're standing on top of a box over there. So I'm not going to get them because I have a loaf on my lap. Loaf! Before we get too far and before I forget, what am I wearing? I am wearing the Perfect Crop Top by Canary Knits out of my hand-dyed yarn, Oswald Vermeer, on the Tesla base, which is a BFL silk cashmere base. And I love it. It's perfect. It's actually spring weather. We're like 60s right now. And um, the lower half of me is wearing the Lizzie skirt by So Over at London out of the Cotton and Steel Halloween 2016 floaty ghosty dress fabric. But again, I have a loaf, so I can't show you. That's a lie. It will always look gross. What if we do this? The next sock I have, it's a little bitty thing. I just cast it on the other day, but it is going to be, I think, the Grand Central socks by Mina Phillip from the New York Sock Club. I haven't decided. I have to look at them. Look at the ones I have that are released and decide. And they are being, oop, they're stuck. They are being knit on my Knit Pro Zings Fixed Circular. It's a 32 inch cable. But when I bought these, I did not realize that the, I don't know why I didn't think of this, that when they measure it, they measure from tip to tip. So needles included, it's 32, but the needles are very large. So the cable is very small. So they're not my favorite needles to work with. I lied. They're not my favorite cable to work with, but I love the needles dearly. So I'm just going to use them. I know that they're not going to last very long because of how I'm bending the cable when I knit, but you know what? I'm going to use them until they die. <laughs> that was a very good intro into these socks. I just have the cuff started. It's a one by one twisted rib. Yeah on 2.5 millimeter Knit Pro Zings. And I'm using a Gales Art Sock Blank that somebody graciously gifted to me. I love it, so thank you. You know who you are. And it is a Sparkle Sock Blank. So there we go. I don't know the name of it. The tag's in the middle. I don't know if I can dig it out. Ooh, look at that, I can. Does that have a name? Psychedelic Flower. Yep, Psychedel Psychedelic Flower on her Sparkle Sock Blank. So there we go. I think that um, this will lend nicely to the Grand Central pattern. But it's still just the wee baby. I haven't really put aside the time to work on it. I wanted to finish Jake socks and focus on my shawls because why cast on one when you cast on 30 at the same time? What if we just put all of our hair on this side? I'm tired of pinning my bangs back. Ah! Now my hair is huge. Oh god, it's on the other side. This is the worst podcast yet. I love you guys, Scoop. Ready? I don't even know what's going on. Ready? Scoop! 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 I'm gonna get away something.
an adventure. So besides Jake Socks, what has been stealing all of my attention, and I'm in the middle of the row, like a dingbat, is the Fairy Hill Shawl by Helen Stewart. So I'm just gonna take my glasses off and do this. Is the Fairy Hill Shawl by Helen Stewart. It is the first shawl in the shawls, the newest Shawl Society edition. And I'm in love with it. I'm having, uh, it's, I'm 75% done after this row. I'm knitting this out of Hedwig on my ginger base, which is a new, like, minimal speckle colorway. And it's just a dream to work with. I just love how delicate it looks, and then you still get these little pops of the black and the gray and the, the like, pinkish brown. I know, but it's very pretty, and I, I am beating it. So these are the topaz from Chivalry Beads. I think it's a six. I don't, I don't know. I don't know bead sides. I don't have them in front of me. They're in an ocean's pouch. Then they're not in the bag. Wait, no, they're not in the bag. I think I actually took them out of the bag because I'm holding them in, um, I got a little Macron stitch marker holder from Junkyard when she was selling them. I don't know if she is anymore. You're fine. You're fine. And so that's holding all my beads because it's like the perfect little nugget to hold the beads and then I can stab them with a crochet hook. So if you have one, I highly recommend it or any small plastic thing for beading. But yep, there we go. I'm in the major lace section. 75% done. I think I have um, 12 more rows after this and then washing and blocking. So I should be able to finish it before the next one comes out. I hope, because that's a three skein shawl. Mom's gonna be big. Oh, I love it. And I've got my little big progress keeper on it because he was in he was in the bag I was using. I don't know if it'll focus. There we go, a little bit. And I'm knitting these on size four millimeter US six and knit pro zings because I'm addicted to them. This is yeah, this has pretty much been those two things. I have not touched the cardigan. I put the pattern back in the bag, so we're a step closer. Um, I haven't really touched my vortex. I put two rows on it during knit group yesterday. It just hasn't gotten the love that it deserves. Not as of recently, but I'm going to start bringing that out. That's going to be my knit group knit. I think I should be able to get it out pretty quickly then, because I really just want to wear it before it gets too hot. So yeah, not a lot of knitting this week. Uh, it's been a little bit of a crazy week, but we'll get into that when we do light stuff. Spinning. We've got Edgar over here. He's living over here now. Um, I have not touched him in a week and I'm very sad about it. I keep looking at the fiber and wishing I would just sit down and spin, but I just haven't, I haven't put aside the time. Maybe tonight. Maybe I'll do spinning Sundays. I know why and I should. What? Do you want to show them your football? Go get your football. <laughs> Go get it. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Oh, thank you. Go get your football. Go get it. You found a football this morning. I'm very proud of it. Oh, let me put my shuttles back up. I also have no sewing, but I really want to sew. I considered cutting out fabric for a Betty dress, for two Betty dresses and trying to sew one instead of podcasting today, but I figured I should get a podcast out. And then I can cut the fabric out after if I do a really good job on the podcast, which obviously, as you can see, my language skills are impeccable. So this is going real well. Yeah. So no sewing yet. Give it time. Yeah, the plan is I have a purple double gauze and a gray grid fabric so i'm going to do another sleeveless version of the betty dress in the gauze and a three-quarter sleeve version of the dress in the gray fabric because i have the proper amount of the gray fabric to do the full skirt so i'm gonna do it do it right all the way through and then the um the gauze i think i'm gonna do a three-quarter skirt or pleated i haven't decided yet oh. See what happens when I get there. I think that's all I've been crafting. It's been a very slow week. I will, I will say that. I will admit that. There are gonna be a couple slow weeks coming up. Uh, crafting has not been in the forefront of my brain as of recently. So let's get into shop update. 
if you are not here for the shop update or the life stuff thank you so much for watching if you're here for shop update and life stuff let's let's do this bring it i don't know how i'm gonna do this with the dog in my lap but let's So that's it for crafting. <laughs> Dog hair. It's not been a very crafty week, but that's gonna happen sometimes, especially if this is a weekly podcast. But we do have a little bit of stash enhancement. But after this, I'm done. I'm going on, I'm going cold sheep. No more. Nothing else. But I couldn't help myself. I couldn't, I couldn't stop it. If you don't watch or follow Franco Knits, you should. Uh, I was watching her podcast a couple weeks ago and she revealed the, she does a sock club every month. So she does a new colorway and a sock pattern to go with it. And she revealed her May sock club, which I swooned over, obvious, obviously. So it is sunset on the Seine. <laughs> I know, bud. And here it is. It's just this beautiful, pale, like, peachy pink with these speckles. And she was telling the story as she was talking about the yarn, about, like, I don't remember, it was, like, a photograph or something about just, like, looking at it and, like, seeing the sunset and walking down the boulevard. And I just immediately started crying everywhere because all I could picture was, like, the first day Jake and I got into Paris. And we dropped all of our stuff off at the hotel and then we went and we walked along the Seine and we walked up to the Eiffel Tower for the first time. And then now that I'm looking at it in person, all I can think about is when we left Notre Dame on, when did we go Monday? Thank you. When we left Notre Dame, <coughs> when? <coughs> no. <laughs> when we left Notre Dame on that Monday, um, we walked along the river, there's like a, like the street level, and then further down there's like a little walking path right, like right on the river, and there's like really cool playscape stuff that I wanted to play on, but my feet hurt too much, and we were on our way to dinner, so we couldn't. And it just made me think of that, like walking past this like medieval castle, and like seeing Notre Dame in the corner, and then like walking towards the Louvre, and the Eiffel Tower, and... I just like started crying in the middle of dying and watching this pod. I had to like stop the podcast so I could like weep for a little bit and then immediately messaged her, ask her if she was going to die it again. Can I get it? What, like, what do I need to do to get this yarn? Because I'll do it. And so she put up a couple listings and I, I bought one and then I sat there for a minute and went, no, 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 I need two. So I bought two. <laughs> so one is on her Paris base. Ooh, sorry, which is her merino nylon Stellina, and the other one is on her Normandy base, which is an 80-20 nylon and merino, merino nylon. Why did I say nylon first? And it's a high twist, and I've never, I've never knit with this um, blend and twist of yarn before, so I really wanted to try this out. This will probably be the socks out of the club, the sparkly base. And then this one, I think I'm gonna base my So Faded sweater out of. And, sorry Audrey, you're gonna have to get up for this one. Hold on. Puppy intermission. Again, I should have grabbed this while I was prepping. Nope. Oh. Oh. Okay. Nope. All right. Do we even want to be on my lap anymore? Not really. Corgi butt. Here's my skirt. What was I saying? This gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful skein is going to be the base to my so faded sweater. I wasn't going to knit it. I wasn't going to knit it, but if I can get this to this, yes. 
or just put them together. I don't really, I don't really care at this point what they are as long as they're like on, on me. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna, but because I can't buy yarn, this means I have to dye yarn. So, or just let these two kind of marinate for a little bit, decide what they want to be, and then maybe dye up a couple skeins to go between them. Um, maybe you could do some stash diving. I would love them to just all be French based, but I already have a French based shawl. So maybe add some English stuff to it so I can encapsulate the whole trip. We shall see. I would love this to just be all Franco V knits because I love her yarn and they all go together. So maybe over the like next 30 years, I'll just slowly buy a skein every so often. Not because it's outrageously expensive to buy from Devin, but because I'm on a yarn diet, so I can't buy from Devin. <laughs> uh, and there's her label. And there is her shop info. So definitely go check her out. She just started doing like ready to ship orders. I love watching her updates go up. Is that weird to like, some people like to people watch. I like to go to shop updates and watch, watch things upload and then watch them be bought. I do that to Volenbine every so often. Like if I'm not like down on a Friday, but like if I'm not feeling up, up to my game. I just watch her shop updates sell out. Is that weird? I'm so sorry if that's really weird. I don't know. That's like my pastime, I guess. I like to watch people buy yarn. <laughs> so, there they are. They're beautiful. I just, I cannot get over this. I don't, like, I'm not a light pink person. I don't know if you can tell by my skin tone, but like, I'm already like a pale fleshy person so if I get pale fleshy yarn it's gonna look naked but it's too beautiful I don't care I don't care I'm oh I really want to knit this up now I might I might knit this up I might wind this up and cast this on soon because now we only have two pairs of socks on the needles and that's that's not enough it's science so this might, this might get cast on quicker than I anticipated. But these guys, I think they're gonna marry, marinade, get to know each other in my jar for a little bit. I think that's what's gonna happen. I, I just love it so much. I just don't wanna stop looking at it. So that's my stash enhancements and that is the last stash enhancements. The goal is for 2017. If I can make it through the rest of the year without buying anything, I will be happy camper that is iron chewing on his ball not throwing up I just want to clarify if you could hear that on that note uh the rest of the episode is shop update and life stuff so if you are not here for either of those thank you so much for watching and if you are let's get into it so shop updates are Mondays at 7 p.m eastern standard time at uponacorgi.etsy.com and I really hope you can make it oh that was my belly apparently it's lunchtime I always podcast when I'm hungry good thing I have girls go cookies so we have a lot of new stuff this week. Um, everything's still in the basket because I organized my, these are my shop shelves. Organized my shop shelves. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of space for stuff. Uh, a lot of it's still left over from the Connecticut sheep and wool. So um, I will have one skein of Gravia Orange on the Marie Cutie based. I don't know why I dyed it up, but I just really wanted to dye bright orange. So I did. I'm not really sure how this is gonna work. It's gonna end in a disaster. Uh, so we have three new tweed colorways being introduced. This is Mustard Life, and the tweed is our iron base. Yeah, so it's a BFL and Tweedy Nep base, um, and it's a two ply, so it's perfect for like socks, garments, accessories, essentially anything. Whatever you want to knit, you can knit out of this yarn. And it's BFL, so it's super strong, and it'll hold up to a the wear and tear of your sock needs. So this is a mustard life because you can't have, I could not continue selling yarn without having a mustard colorway. I just couldn't do it to you. 
I love it. I'm gonna do a pair of the I Heart B socks and call them my Honey Bay socks. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Iron. And then this is always a glass of cab. And it's just a very like blue purple base dark red. I just love the way the tweed stands out on these. I've been on a, a tonal kick. You're fine. Do you want to get down? No? You just want me to pet you? And then you also be introducing Tweety Librarian. I love it. It's just these like neutral grays and greens. Or not neutral greens. Neutral grays and browns and tans and this pops of green. I love it. I want a sweater out of this. I feel like this is a really good sweater. Classic Tweety colorways. We will have nose stuck in a book. Just in time for the mauve along as well. So this was supposed to be the Romantics, which is like a, a light off-white creamy base with bits of maroon and mauve speckles, but the maroon kind of took over. So it's not the same. It's very close, but it's not the same. So I'm calling them so romantic. Um, they're gonna be one of a kinds. This one's probably the closest. I think the penny bases I'll put up as the Romantics, because this is very close. Um, so this is what the rest of them look like. They're very pink. It's the nature of dye, so, so romantic. We'll be going up in the shop. And this will be on Ginger, Audrey, Tesla. And then the pennies are gonna be the romantics. Cause I think, I think now that I'm seeing it on camera, it looks much better. I love you, but you can't stay here. We'll be having some Corgis Unleashed, which will be our like free swim anarchy in the dye pots. Uh, this is Dragon's Horde. This will be across most bases. This is, oops, let's rip the tag off. Into the Sea. Danielle, don't look. And this will be on the ginger base. Everything's just piled into one laundry basket, so it's a little bit hard to get to. You'll be having a little bit of neon. I wanted to play with speckles of neon and it went cray cray on me. So a little bit of neon. This will be on the Audrey base. We will also be having Nightmares plus 10 uh, on Ginger and Audrey. And an update of Libraries volume one. And this will be on Audrey and Ginger as well. What I know you've all been waiting for. I think that's it for single, single sets. I think, I think that's it. Um, if you want to know before the update and before the podcast come out, we have a newsletter that you can subscribe to on the website, uponacorgi.com. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, my nose ring has been crooked the whole time. Um, I send out newsletters every Friday night of what will be in the shop and sneak peeks and stuff. So if you are interested in that, that's there. And the moment you've all been waiting for, uh, I have been obsessed a little bit with Vera Gradients. So it's a gradient kit of variegated yarns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Helen Stewart sent out the clue for the next Shawl Society, and that was the clue. So I did a little research, I went a little crazy, and I dyed up some kits. Yeah, I'm gonna keep them in the packaging because it's nice and packaged and ready to go. Um, they will be going in the shop. There's only one of each at the moment, but I will be putting up pre-orders along with the ready to ships of the set. So you can order it on the Tesla base, the Penny base, or the Ginger base. Yep, so it'll be these five colorways. You can pre-order. Yes. And it's three skeins, but uh, I really like how a lot of them lend themselves to adding a fourth or fifth in either direction. So then you can do like a so faded or any gradient kind of pattern you want. So without further ado, if this doesn't work out, I'll put up pictures. This is the That's No Moon kit. Sorry, my email's going crazy. There we go. That's no moon. And again, I really like, oop, oop. So this is on the Tesla base. 
which is uh, BFL Silk Cashmere. Oh, look at that. Uh, four colors. I'll stop. So, yep, tassel base. That's no, or not. <laughs> Moon of my life on the ginger base. Sorry if this is too close for you and how tired I look. I slept really well too. Apparently just not not my right eye. My right eye slept terribly last night. Uh, this is Dream Kitchen and this is on Penny. This is uh, Le Dame Death, and this is on Penny, which is in reference to, uh, I watched Harlots yesterday, all of it, and um, it's not for children. Do not watch this with children. It's about brothels in London, 1760s, 1770s. Maybe, I, I want to say 1770s. I don't, I don't think the revolution has happened yet, but, um, one of the owners of, like, the fancy brothel, uh, is nicknamed La Dame Death after some things transpire, and her brothel is very, like, light pastels and French and white and pink. I dyed this before I saw that, but as soon as I saw it, like, this skein reminded me of it, so I'm like, you know what? It's a La Dame Death gradient. And so far the most popular on Instagram the Hedwig. Um, so the next sets, uh, I went a little bit crazy with the gray dye on this one. So the next ones will be, uh, I think, a little bit less speckled and less gray. They will be truer to the um, Hedwig skeins that have been up in the shop. So, yes. And this is on the ginger base. Each skein ranges from 438 yards to 435 yards. You get three skeins in the kit. Ooh. And so you have the five ready to order. Those will go up in the shop immediately followed by pre-order. So they're all going to go up at the same time. So then if you want Hedwig on Penny or Tesla, you don't have to wait. Well, you have to wait because I can dye it, but you don't have to wait to order it. And I believe that's it for shop updates. I'm also going to put up, um, I used to have pre-orders for tonals. So the tonals that I have photographed as of recently, uh, I'm going to put those back up as pre-orders. So like Nightmares Plus 10, all the Victorian poisons, the, um, all the unicorn colorways. Those are going to go up. So you can pre-order those. And I believe that is it for shop update. So... 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mondays, uh, May 22nd is the next one. Thank you so much if you do make it and support the shop. It really means the world to me. So thank you. And we're going to move on to life stuff. Girl's going to need coffee for this. And my Halloween goth, uh, David C. Mug. As always, as you can tell, my coffee is quite cold now. What's up, bud? But it matches my skirt, so I had to wear it. Can't get out the window! Can't get out the window! Well, so my life is the cat has learned that if he jumps hard enough, he can rip through the screen and get onto the porch. He's an indoor cat. He's never been outside. Except for in the dead of winter, when there's four feet of snow on the ground, we take him out once a year to show him that the world is a cold and evil place and never go there. We essentially Rapunzel him. That's what we do. But no, he's learned that spring is sprung and he can sit on the porch. But he's not the brightest cat, so he always tries to go off... We have like a tiny little two shingle slant at about this degree and this is where he wants to go. Cat fiasco's over. Dogs are now watching him like a hawk. Yeah, life stuff. So besides cat learning that he uh, can get out the window, we are moving. Where you ask? Who knows? Uh, our, as I've said before on the podcast, our landlord uh, is selling the building. We live above a dentist office and he is a retired dentist so he wants to super retire and so he sold the building and we have now a month 
and 10 days to find a new place to live and move out. So that's sort of been taking over my whole life is like between dying, looking at apartments, looking at houses, looking at everything. We, we don't know what's going on yet. We don't know where we're going to live. We don't know what town we're going to live in. We don't know if we're going to buy a house. We don't know if we're going to rent a house. We don't, we don't know. We even, we don't know. Everything's sort of up in the air. Um, yeah. So that's really been it. I've been slowly packing already. Um, I figure the mo the more I can pack up and get into boxes and out of the way, um, the easier it will be when we know so we can just go and just get out. Make this as painless as possible. Yeah. Um, like the office is all staying up, but like my stash is already packed up. Um, I just had to put, I have to get another box for the fiber. Everything is in, um, the boxes I get my yarn shipped in, so it's gonna look like a giant yarn shipment. Yeah, with like, we're gonna go through the murder rooms, which are attics, not murder, not places where we murder people. Um, we have a whole wall of shelves behind the couch we have to go through, one of which is filled with fabric I didn't even know I owned. Yes, this is my life. So, um... Yeah, not a lot of crafting. I haven't really been able to concentrate on cables. There's no way I'm gonna be able to get that cardigan knit on. I'm gonna have to tank out everything every time I knit it. Um, the brioche has been really hard to wrap my head around because of it. We found out last weekend. Yes. Yeah, it's been a little bit crazy. So I'm just powerhousing through work and just trying to get as much yarn out there as I possibly can because while I'm dying I'm not thinking about all the crazy stress that is moving. But that's really been my life for the past. Yeah. It's been very nice so we've been um, able to use the new patio set a lot. It's been like in the 90s weather talk for the past couple days so we put the air conditioners in finally and now it's back down to the 60s so trying to get a lot of outside time with the bubble ups. Audrey thinks we're moving back to my parents house because I was told while I was at my parents house and I said oh we're moving and then we moved all of Adrian's craft stuff out of my old bedroom into the new craft room so Audrey probably thinks we're moving home and she's gonna be severely disappointed when we don't <laughs> oh god my dog loves my parents house more than me <sighs> and that's really been it for life stuff I don't know how much I'm gonna update you guys on this stuff or what's gonna happen with the podcast because of it because I have a feeling um our last move into this apartment was like overnight done like oh we kind of like this apartment oh we'll put a deposit down maybe you know we'll look at something else and then within like three days we were here so this is gonna be a very rapid rapid pace so if I just disappear for a couple weeks I will let you know on Instagram or in the Ravelry group but don't worry we're fine not dead not sure what's happening. Not sure. So yeah, that's that's why there's no crafting this week. I am very excited um, to get ooh, the new Shaw Society pattern. Uh, I dyed up myself the Dream Kitchen on Tesla. So this is what I will be doing. I'm still going to continue doing the Shaw Society on all the bases in all my in all my base in all my yarn words. So I dyed up myself Dream Kitchen because I haven't knit a shawl out of the Tesla base yet. So I'm very excited to see how that goes. And that's about it. I have to go. I kind of want to dye yarn right now. I'm going to get this edited and up for you guys. I'm going to go have a sewing day with a friend and I'm going to pack up some stuff. I think we're going to pack up the books today. So thank you so much for watching. If you're a new viewer, I hope you enjoyed. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Again, you can find me at all the fun places. You will see them in the credits, and you can find all my hand-dyed yarn at uponcorgi.com. Shop updates are 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Mondays on our Etsy shop, which you can get a link to at the website. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I will hopefully see you next week. Bye!